GPS approaches use a ton of acronyms that are new for instrument students or those getting back into IFR. Also, it doesn't help that so many of them are so similar like LPV, LNAV, and LNAV plus V. Our Flight Insight IFR Ground School breaks down all these acronyms in a way to help you remember them for good. But right now, we're going to dive in on one of them, LNAV plus V, and why it's not to be found on any instrument approach plate. LNAV stands for Lateral Navigation. By itself, this acronym will be found on many GPS approach plates. It's typically found towards the bottom of the list of minimums, just above the circling minimum. This is because it typically has a higher minimum than others. The reason? LNAV provides only lateral guidance, like a localizer approach, instead of both lateral and vertical guidance, like a precision ILS approach. You don't follow a vertical glide path needle or indication when flying an LNAV approach. However, many modern GPS units have a way of kind of deriving a vertical glide path for you. GPS units equipped with WAS, which most new units do now have, will be able to create this advisory glide path for you. You'll know if your approach features this advisory glide path if the GPS unit displays the acronym LNAV plus V. The V simply stands for vertical. It allows you to fly the approach with both lateral and vertical guidance. So why is an LNAV plus V a listed approach type on the plate? Well, unlike a GPS approach with both vertical and lateral guidance, like the LPV approach at the top of the list, the LNAV plus V doesn't provide official vertical guidance. It's advisory in nature only. The glide path doesn't guarantee obstruction clearance if you follow it all the way down from the MDA to the runway. You shouldn't be going past the MDA or DA on any approach until satisfying some visual cues listed in 91175, but official vertical guidance like on an ILS or LPV approach will have some type of obstacle protection or at least some type of survey having been done down to the runway. An advisory glide path like on an LNAV plus V makes no such guarantees. The FAA has no direct role in computing the advisory glide path on the LNAV plus V. It's computed based on a vertical descent angle from the runway threshold crossing height. Now, on this approach, which has an LPV minimum, you wouldn't expect to see an LNAV plus V when you fly it. If your unit is WAS capable, you'll simply get the LPV approach, which does have official vertical and lateral guidance. If you don't have WAS, you'll just get the regular LNAV approach with only lateral guidance and no glide path advisory or official. But on an approach that doesn't have an LPV minimum, your unit might be able to compute the advisory glide path and give you an LNAV plus V. Now again, you won't find a minimum for this approach, so you simply use the LNAV minimum listed. The fact that LNAV plus V isn't listed on your charts should serve as a big disclaimer for you. Again, the FAA isn't sanctioning or guaranteeing the protections of the advisory glide path. It's for situational awareness only. Flying with both vertical and lateral guidance can feel the same as a precision approach feels. Complete with going down to a decision altitude and making an immediate decision about going missed or not, but this is a non-precision approach terminating in an MDA. You still need to level off at or above the MDA and search for the visual cues needed to continue lower. You may be asking why, if the GPS can compute an advisory glide path, the FAA doesn't simply incorporate it into its official LPV approach. And again, this is because official vertical guidance is more than just a straight line drawn from the threshold crossing height backwards, which satisfies all step-down minimums to the FAF. There are very stern obstacle clearance requirements both above and below the MDA that must be met. This of course doesn't mean following the advisory glide path will fly you into terrain or a tower as long as you're still meeting step-down minimums on the glide path. And that's the important point with advisory glide paths. You still need to adhere to all step-down minimum altitudes, including the MDA, which are the official parts of the approach as opposed to the non-official glide path. So next time you see on your GPS that you'll be flying the LNAV plus V, don't go looking for that in the minimum section. Simply use the LNAV figures and realize that you're flying a lateral navigation approach to a non-precision MDA minimum, and you're still responsible for all step-down fixes and not going below the MDA until you're legally able to do so. Hopefully that clears up some confusion. Check out the Flight Insight website today, linked here and in the description for more training.